Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this fun little situation. My name is Max Green, or uh, Arkadash, as this particular piece is marketed as. Uh, today we're just going to do a little walkthrough of this piece called uh, Mind and Body that I posted a little while ago. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a piece that exists. Um, it was a little foray into the world of the wub, that uh, classic 2000s dubstepy thing. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of figure out what was going on to see if I could do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's jump right in. All right, so here we are. It's a pretty big project. It's actually probably one of the biggest that I've got floating around my hard drive these days. Um, but let's start from the from the top. You can see what's up. So first here uh, in these melody sections, um, first thing this here um, is just, just my voice. Uh, down and with a little bit of, um, it's actually a tremolo that's set to uh, a full full scale square wave um, 100 to 0 volume thing, so it's just ch -ch 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 acting kind of like an automated noise gate. You can do the same thing with uh, like an auto pan, and I think I do that elsewhere also. The other thing below this, the thing that's carrying kind of the main melody of the piece is this saws sound. So basically this is something I sampled myself a little while ago. Um, it's a Turkish Balama saz, which hits this beautiful thing here. In this particular piece, it's playing just harmonics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just harmonics of this, um, of this particular instrument, uh, and sampled those and playing them into a melody, um, which... stutter, beat, repeat stuff on there uh, in that section as well. Just to add some fun little, little bits. Um, but yeah, these kind of run a full gambit of stuff. Um, I'm actually going to start from the bottom here. This is just a little piano hit. Uh, nothing super special. Um, this guy only shows up in this kind of first bridge section. Um, it's actually, unfortunately, all of the audio, uh, or all the elements in here are all flattened to audio for mixing, so I can't <laughs> show you the original, uh, instruments that, uh, made these things before, but basically this was, uh, a sample of actually of some, uh, Indian ankle bells kind of rolling around in a plastic box, which sounds a lot like rain, I think that is super cool. Um, and then it's basically going through a couple of different uh, EQs that have a really sharp peak just at 440 hertz, so A. Um, and if you do that enough times, you get a nice note, and then you can chuck that into a sampler and, and play it. And it sounds really cool. <laughs> it's a little bit kind of roadsy, but with this rain, sound to it. You can do that with anything. I've done that with a few, few things. Um, the other thing that's in here uh, is just this little uh, bell sound. Um, also with some beat repeat stuttery stuff on it. Um, yeah. There it is. Um, what else is in here? I guess the last thing would be kind of the big, the big pad, the big boy which is a combination of this little synth brassy uh, sound, which sounds a little bit derpy on its own, uh, and this big super saw uh, type sound. Uh, and those together are kind of doing this duct um, element in the drops, which uh, eventually turns into this. which I think is pretty cool. That was one of the things about this piece that I thought came out pretty well. And that's done um, just on the group bus here 
using, like I said, an, an auto pan um, set. You can see it kind of doing its thing there. Um, yeah, that's just automated, and then the rest is literally just a utility game plugin automating these little volume ducks, which is probably an easier way to do that. <laughs> but uh, that's how that was done. So moving on to these, these are just kind of um, ambient things that are going in the background. This is um, just a sample of Mongolian throat singing um, that is pitched down uh, like a perfect fifth or something like that. That's just kind of going on through the whole thing. It sounds kind of neat and spooky. Uh, and then this... Um, I, I wish I could tell you how I made this. I do not remember. Uh, I assume it was some sort of vocal sample going through a bunch of reverb, and then it's just pitched using the transposition um, envelope in the clip itself. Uh, and then it's also going through this kind of granulator -y thing, which is always kind of like high bits you hear that kind of lag behind the, the pitch changes. Um, I just think it sounds pretty cool. I was, I'm pretty happy with that sound. Uh, but that's actually kind of more of a melodic element in there also. Um, yeah, that's all that's in there. The percussion <laughs> you can see is uh, pretty sizable. Um, it's just a whole bunch of layers and samples um, going together. I won't go through every single one of these here, um, but the one kind of thing of note here would be this tabla thing, which um, I'm actually really surprised it sounds as good as it does. It's literally just a bunch of tabla sounds. Um, put together and uh, and played with MIDI, which, um, and I, this particular beat, there's a name for this rhythm, um, but I cannot remember it. Uh, I'm sure someone can tell me in the comments. Um, yeah, then just a whole bunch of other little samples here and there. Same deal with the, with the drums. These are all just layered in with, uh, straight with audio. I didn't do these in a drum rack. Um, Pretty standard stuff. It's a kick. Uh, and the snare is just layered. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing to write home about there. The bass section here, um, the first thing in here would be this growl layer, which is doubled, which I've had some questions about uh, in the past. That is actually just um, my voice. Um, it's doubled, it's not pitched down or anything. It's just kind of this really low, gross, um, growly sound that uh, probably is not very good for my vocal cords. But it's like this like <clears throat> kind of weird weirdness. But I just sung that in here. And if I m mess with it hard enough, I can get it to a specific note. So that's all that is. Just double just setting this kind of weird uh, thing under the other pitched up vocals. I thought that sounded pretty nice. This is just kind of a standard uh, sound. I made it in analog in Ableton, and um, yeah, it kind of doesn't. It's just bass stuff. It turns into this more filtery wubbiness sometimes. Um, yeah, that's kind of that. The other thing that's in this group, um, are these growl sounds, which I use like one or two too many times, I think, but it's just, uh, one little growl sound made in serum and then another kind of weird sounding thing to thicken it out that I think I'm in operator. Um, yeah, that's all that's in there. Uh, and then finally, our last layer here are the effects, <laughs> which uh, these are all just kind of little transitionary risers and downlifters and impacts and stuff. Um, also, this uh, chant thing, which has its own kind of reversed sound. Um, uh, 
which is in there too. Uh, this is my first time kind of using effects as transitionary elements, and I thought it worked pretty well. I was I was pretty pleased. Uh, I maybe went a little bit overboard, but uh, yeah, it's something that I use fairly often now, maybe not to this extent, but I think it sounds pretty nice. The one thing in here that is probably of interest would be this um, group of things here. Um, which um, actually were made, they're just some kind of stock transition sounds, but what I did, there's this plugin made by Sennheiser that's supposed to be for a binaural mic. Like usually you just have um, your standard left right stereo spread. This thing lets you pan stuff 360 degrees around your head. Uh, it doesn't work as well with uh, just stereo samples that aren't recorded on a binaural uh, thing, but it makes this weird kind of swirly craziness. Um, if you're listening to it on, on headphones or good speakers, it sounds pretty pretty wild. Yeah, that's kind of, that's about everything. Um, as far as the overall piece itself, oh, and I guess there's also just some, you know, a couple different reverbs and then those uh, that granular delay. This is just a couple different granular delays put together, or grain delays. Master, yeah, we just got a um, spam. Um, as far as the piece itself, um, I was pretty pleased with it. I worked on this for, for a good while, kind of on and off. Um, and I thought it, it came out pretty good. It's a very, like, produced, like, <laughs> I know how to use Ableton <laughs> kind of uh, situation. There are definitely some things about it that I would change, though. I think overall it sounds uh, very predictable. It's kind of, especially like with the drops and everything, the buildups are very kind of like, okay, it's it's a drop. That's what we're doing. Uh, and the drops themselves are kind of long, and there's a lot of them, and there's often kind of a little bit too much happening in them, I think. I think the whole piece would kind of benefit from a bit of just space and breathing room, which is why I like the kind of bridge and build-up sections uh, a lot more. As far as like the mix goes, I was actually really pleased. This track has a lot of elements in it, um, and I still feel like it came out um, pretty balanced, and you can you can hear everything pretty well. I'm no mix engineer by any means, but uh, you know I think it I think it came out okay. Especially the the low end, I was really pleased with the kick and the bass um, are both really. Um, audible. It doesn't really feel like they're fighting each other too much, um, which is always nice. I can hear everything. Um, so that's often what I find I struggle with the most is kind of getting the low end right. So that was that was good. I was really pleased with a lot of the, the sounds in here. I thought that um, some of those came out really nicely. These kind of swoopy, choppy pad things I thought sounded pretty pretty cool um, and you know some of these other things the I if I would do this again I would definitely swap out this Saz sound I thought it was cool at the at the time but it really sound it sounds very sampled and it's kind of whatever I think I could probably record it just like <laughs> playing the instrument like it's meant to be you know I'm happy to do it I definitely learned a lot about Ableton making this piece, but I don't think I'll be uh, really making stuff this wubby <laughs> in the future. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, the Ableton walkthrough for, for mind and body. Um, let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments. I'm an open book, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later.